This is a 53-year-old male status post-assault. This is a trauma patient. We have uh, axial CT images through the level of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis after the use of intravenous contrast. If we put this on lung windows, notice already that there is ground glass attenuation at the lung bases, which were felt to reflect pulmonary contusions. No pneumothorax or laceration was seen. If we put this on bone windows, very briefly, there is an isolated left tenth rib fracture here. No other rib fractures were seen. Putting this back in soft tissue windows, we notice already that there is perihepatic hemorrhage. There is perisplenic hemorrhage here. There are multiple lacerations here through the spleen, all of which are greater than three centimeters. And there is focus of high attenuation within the perisplenic hemorrhage consistent with active extravasation here anteriorly and here posterior laterally as well. These findings were consistent with splenic trauma. This would be at least a grade three splenic trauma based on AAST, AASP criteria as many of the lacerations were greater than three centimeters in length. Active extravasation is very important to consider when considering splenic trauma. Active extravasation is seen as hyperdensity that is isodense to the aorta that is seen on the arterial phase and typically progresses or becomes more apparent or changes in configuration on delayed sequences. Pseudoaneurysms can also be hyperdense on the arterial phase, but they typically will become isodense on delayed imaging. So that is how we differentiate pseudoaneurysm from active hemorrhage. This was a case of splenic trauma with active extravasation and active hemorrhage.